you guys pass the salt? Oh, Sam, that's very insulting to a cook, you know. What is? Well, you haven't even tasted it. You want to put salt on it. Well, I like salt. But you don't even know whether or not it needs salt. Look, I went to a lot of trouble with this recipe to make sure it tastes the way it should taste. Well, I like it the way it should taste with the extra salt on it. How do you know that? Because I like extra salt in everything. <sighs> this tastes perfect without extra salt. It needs nothing. Then can I have the chutney? <laughs> it doesn't need chutney. Well, it tastes as if it needs something. Look, I went to a lot of trouble to make sure this tastes the way it should taste. Well, it seems a bit strange to me. What does? Well, to go to all that trouble to make something that tastes like it needs chutney. It doesn't need chutney. Will you stop that? It needs salt. It doesn't need salt. It doesn't need chutney. Need mustard. <laughs> really hot mustard. The hotter the better. And chutney. And salt. And tomato sauce. <laughs> Oh, why do I bother? That's the last time I listened to Bernard King. Yeah, well, he's only good at boiled eggs. That's because he looks like one. <laughs> oh, that's probably him now telling me he left out the salt. <laughs> and the chutney. Um, uh, Ben, can you please get that? You're the closest. Oh, I would, but I've got my mouth full. No, you haven't. I have now. <laughs> oh, Dad, that's unfair. Oh, for goodness sake, it's not going to hurt either of you to answer the phone for once and... Oh, gee, I hate that when I, when I do that. Andrew Singh's phones. Oh, shut up. No, not you. Not you. Sorry. Uh, who is this, anyway? Vera? Vera who? Vera MacArthur? I don't know anyone named Vera MacArthur, do I? Arthur's mother. Oh, you're Arthur's mother! Yes, I know you know that, but I didn't know that. I mean, I, mean, I do know that, but I didn't know it was you on the phone. I mean, I didn't recognise you on the phone. No, it's because she looks different on the phone. <laughs> it's because you look different on the phone. No, I'm not an idiot, but the children are working on it. <laughs> now, what can I do for you? Oh, uh, just a minute. Have either of you two seen Arthur? Oh. Yeah, it's, it's about, about this high. high. No, no, no. Don't do that one. Have you seen him? Yeah, he was here earlier. He was here earlier. But he went home, didn't he? But he went home, didn't he? Oh, well, um, I'm sure he's not here. Hang on, I'll have another look. Is Arthur lost? Here, so. Mother said he hasn't come home yet. No, no sign of him. Arthur, are you here? Right here, Mr Kelly. No sign of him. <laughs> just a minute. If there's no sign of him, who was that that sounded just like him? Arthur, you are here. I know. Well, your mother's looking for you. Hang on. Uh, Vera, yes, he's here. Righto, I'll send him home straight away. Okay, bye. Arthur, go home. <laughs> Don't do this to me, Mr. Kelly. Don't do what to you? I'm just telling you, you have to go home. Don't send me back to that house. Arthur, what's wrong? I'm never going back there. I'm running away. Well, you haven't got far. I'm doing it by stages. <laughs> Arthur, what have you done? I haven't done anything. It's them that's going to be doing it. Doing what? And who are we talking about? Her mother. She's going to ring my mother and my mother will say yes and then they'll do it to me. Do what to you? Cynthia Broadhurst! Doesn't anyone listen around here? <laughs> Arthur, calm down, sit down and tell us what all this is about. No, don't. Why not? Because if he tells us, we'll have to do something about it. Or more correctly, I'll have to do something about it. Oh, rubbish. It is not rubbish. You'll say, oh, that's terrible. I've got to do my nails now. <laughs> Dad, do something about it. And I'll get stuck there. They're going to make me take it to a party. I don't want to know. Well, it's got me fascinated, Mr Kelly. I wouldn't mind hearing it. Fine, you listen to it. I'm running away from home. Don't you like me anymore, Mr Kelly? No. Dad, you mustn't say that. Oh, all right, I'll like you. Now, what's the problem? Cynthia's mum... Uh, uh, hang on. This is Mrs Broadhurst, is it? Yes. She's going to ring my mum and ask if I'll take Cynthia to a party. And my mum will say yes. Oh, yeah, that old one. And then I'll have to take her. So what am I going to do? Simple. Take her to the party. And you call yourself a friend. <laughs> Cynthia Broadhurst is a she-devil from year three and she's after me. What does she look like? She's got warts and bloodshot eyes and one big snaggly tooth that's longer than the other and big thick lips that look like lamb's fry from the butcher. You've seen her, have you? Well, no. But it's just, I know she looks like that. How? Because my mum says she's got a lovely personality. There you go, Mr Kelly's right. What are you talking about? Well, it's a well-known scientific fact that when your mother wants you to take someone out and she says that she's got a lovely personality, that's the death knell. See? Ben knows. No, he doesn't. Now, Arthur, go home and face the music. Well, all right, but the only tune I can hear right now is the death march. <laughs> Uh-uh. Where are you going? I'm going to put the garbage out. But it's not garbage night. Well, um, I'm going to bring it in. We wouldn't want anyone stealing our garbage, would we? Mm -hmm. You're 
be having the most bizarre fashion. Why is that? Well, whenever you say, Dad, I've been thinking, it usually means you want something. So? So I know it'll cost me either money or sanity, and I have none of either left. <laughs> I want to learn to type. No, I'm sorry, Sam. Not now. It's not a good idea. And anyway, you're too young to make such a commitment. What'd you say? I want to learn to type. What did you think I said? Oh, I don't know. I thought it sounded like I want to move in with my boyfriend. Well, why would I say that? Well, I don't know. Teenage girls are always saying that. But I haven't even got a boyfriend. Well, how do I know what you've been doing since lunch? <laughs> well, nobody tells me anything around here. So it's okay if I learn to type? Yes, of course. I'm all in favour of it. I mean, I had to borrow the computer to practice on. Well, that's all right. It'll make a nice change to see someone doing some real typing on their computer. Fine, that's settled then. Uh, tell me, uh, what brought this on? Oh, I'm just a bit bored with my job at 7-Eleven. Oh, you feel you're just a number there? Yes. <laughs> but you know how I really want to be an actress? Yes. Well, I figured that this would give me something to fall back on in those rare times when I'm on demand for musicals and plays and, and theatrical productions and such. Good idea. You know, a lot of actors do this sort of thing these days, Dad. That's right. When Mel Gibson played Hamlet, the world lost a great touch typist. <laughs> Oh, I wonder if poor old Arthur got caught by Wanda Warthog last night. Oh, don't call her that. She's probably a very nice girl. Oh, come on. You heard what he said. She's got warts and bloodshot eyes and big snaggly teeth and lips like lamb's fry from the butchers. Not a very attractive prospect. Oh, that is so sexist, you know. What is? Well, men are so concerned with looks. I mean, what does it matter how she looks? She's probably a very nice girl. <laughs> Tell me, Sam, would you go out with someone who had warts and lips like lamb's fry? From the butchers? Me? Don't be ridiculous. Well, where you go then? Yo, I don't count. I'm a girl. So what? Everybody knows only men are sexist. <laughs> what was that? I said everybody knows only men are sexist. No, I meant what was that knocking sound? Oh, I think there's someone at the back door, Mr. Kelly. Oh, I see. This is going to be like the phone, isn't it? I might as well just get it without the argument. <laughs> oh, hello, little girl. What can I do for you? Would you like to come in? Good morning, I'm Cynthia Broadhurst. Well, good morning, I'm Martin Kelly. This is Wanda Warthog. Miss Lamb's Fry Lips. <laughs> and tell me, why are you knocking on my back door, Miss Broadhurst? Of uh, course, she couldn't reach the doorbell, Mr Kelly. <laughs> ben, the doorbell was on the front door. Yeah, that's why she couldn't reach it. <laughs> Ignore him, his brain is dead and his nervous system hasn't caught up with it yet. <laughs> is he a relative of yours? No. Must be very relieved. Considerably. Now, Miss Broadhurst. Uh, it is Ms. Broadhurst, isn't it? Of course. Of course. What brings you here? I need to see Arthur. Is he here yet? Uh, no, but he usually drops in on his way to school. He should be here any minute. He'll be very surprised to see you. Do you think so? Yeah, because you haven't got warts at all, have you? Ben. <laughs> Ignore him. Sometimes he thinks he's human. I see. Hi, Mr. Kelly. Hi, everybody. Oh, no! Freeze, Arthur. Don't you run out that back door. I said freeze! Don't run out the front door either. Come on. Hello, Arthur. Hmm. Arthur, say hello properly. Hello, Mr. Kelly. Not to me, to Cynthia. Hello, Cynthia. Arthur and I are going to a garden party together, aren't we, Arthur? Hmm. Uh, will you all excuse us while Arthur and I have a few words together? <laughs> What the devil is the matter with you? She's after me, Sam. Anyone can see that. She is a gorgeous girl and she's so pretty. Yeah, but gorgeous is only skin deep and then it gets ugly. <laughs> Arthur, you be nice to her. She's after me, Sam. Didn't you see her dusting me off? So what? Once they dust you off, they think they own you. Oh, nonsense. <laughs> so, you and Arthur are going to walk to school, are you? Yes, I thought we should get to know each other a little better. Oh, but uh, surely if you go to the same school, then you know each other already. Oh, we don't go to the same school. I go to Monty St. Aubergine's. It's a pretty exclusive school, Mr. Kelly. I think we could be talking rich here. <laughs> but uh, how will you get to Monty St. Aubergine's from Arthur's school? The driver will take me. Oh, you mean the bus driver? What's a bus? <laughs> well, I think we're talking serious, Richie, Mr. Kelly. Uh, you have your own driver? Too young to drive my car myself. Listen, Mr. Kelly, if Arthur doesn't want to take him to the party, I'll consider it. Arthur, you're going to go in there and you'll be nice to that little girl. I'd rather be nice to a funnel web. That could be arranged. <laughs> you're going to go in there and you're going to say, Cynthia, how pleasant it is to see you. I will not. And you will smile. I won't. You will smile or I will break your face. 
<laughs> Are there something to say? Cynthia, how pleasant it is to see you. <laughs> well, Arthur, shall we go? Well, uh, why don't you two have a nice walk to school? Tuck in your shirt, Arthur, and we'll be off. See, what did I tell you? Keep smiling. <laughs> Come on, then. He's mad about me. Are you sure about that? Yes. I guess I should get used to the idea. <laughs> Sam, just the person you want to see. Who? Me. Walk this way, please. Why don't you take a seat, Miss Kelly? Betty, what is all this about? Ah, all will be revealed in the fullness of my mind. <laughs> now, I understand that you wish to become a secretary, just like me. Oh, no, Betty, I just want to learn to type. Well, there's a big difference already. Mr Kelly, do you intend to sit there and derogate me all morning? <laughs> No, 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 I thought I'd derogate for half an hour or so, then I'd move on to derisomizing. What? Oh, don't worry. We have our own special little language in this office. Now, pay attention, please. Now, the first thing we do is we inspect the basic equipment for typing, namely, to wit, a keyboard. Or in Betty's case, namely, half wit a keyboard. <laughs> Mr Kelly. Sorry. Now, if you inspect this keyboard, you will notice that it is a German model. Well, how can you tell? Because it uses a German alphabet which starts with a Q. <laughs> it does? Yes. I have been requesting an English model for quite some time now. Oh, for God's sake. After all, we did win the war, didn't we? <laughs> Betty, what's that got to do with it? Well, it's obvious, isn't it? After they lost the war, they retaliated by dumping a whole lot of cheap keyboards on the international market. <laughs> I don't believe that she believes this. And since cheap is the middle name of someone around here... Who are you talking about? I name no names, but follow my eyes. <laughs> don't you call me cheap. It comes as no surprise that I should have to label with a cheap and inferior German alphabet that starts with Q. I don't understand any of this. <laughs> and which is not, in fact, an alphabet, but a cubabet. <laughs> <laughs> Betty, why are you telling me all this? Because I am going to teach you how to type. Oh, how could you teach anyone to type? You see, Sam, it's a little known fact, but I taught myself to type. That's one of the many little known facts about Betty's typing. Mr Kelly... Betty's typing is full of many little known facts, most of which are the words she types in some strange language. Well, it wouldn't be like that if you got me an English keyboard. <laughs> Betty, this is very kind of you, but I really don't need you to teach me to type. Oh, well, if you think so. I mean, it's not as easy as I make it look, you know. <laughs> Betty, what can I say that could possibly reflect the reality of the situation? <laughs> Betty, I've got a computer program to teach me to type. Oh, well, and, and what, pray, is this computer program called? The Learn to Type computer program? Oh, well, oh, I suppose it's a good name for it, then. <laughs> yes, it's certainly better than the one that's called Learn How to Drive a Front End Loader. <laughs> Well, in that case, we'll just have to move straight to shortcut. What? Shortcut is another vital secretarial skill. I thought it was something you got from the butchers. <laughs> butchers is a good word for what Betty does. Sir. Shortcut is what we do first before we type it up into long cut. What is long cut? It's what the rest of the world calls the printed language. Y you see, the Arabs invented shortcut because they didn't have a lot of water to make ink. I can't believe she believes this. Now, you see this symbol here? What does it look like? A full stop. Yes, and that's what it is. <laughs> so, uh, we put this down so you don't have to write the words full stop. See? <laughs> see how much time we've saved? But you do that anyway. I mean, no one writes full stop. You always use a dot. Yeah, and that's how you learn, by being multicultural. <laughs> now, pay attention, please. Now, <clears throat> see this squiggle that looks like a cat? I bet it means cat. Oh, you, you're learning already. <laughs> uh, but this one's really hard one, this one. It looks like an old lady with glasses. It does, and it means Aunt Tess, because uh, that's what it is. But I haven't got an Aunt Tess. Oh, well, you can't use it then. But I always use it when I write a letter to my Aunt Tess. Oh, and she understands it? Well, no, because I usually write Aunt Tess in long cut behind it. Doesn't that sort of destroy the reason for using shortcut in the first place? 
Sam, I already have to put up with Mr. Kelly's derogations. And if you're not going to take this seriously, then there's no point in continuing. <laughs> Is anyone here? Oh, Arthur, come in. My, don't you No, I don't. I look like a gum. No, you don't. Tuck your shirt in. Oh, other side. <laughs> See, I do look like a gum. You do not. But what are you all dressed up for? I want to go to that garden party with Cynthia. Please let me hide here, Sam, so she won't find me. Oh, don't be silly. You go to the garden party. You said you'd go. I did not. My mum said it for me. Same thing when you're your age. Your mother has power for turning over all invitations. Well, it's not fair. Of course it is. Otherwise, little girls would never have partners to go out with them. Oh, hi, Sam. Hi, Arthur. Sam, you will never guess what happened at the... Uh, Arthur, return of the gump, right? <laughs> <laughs> oh, Arthur, stop that. And Ben, have you got any brains? Arthur looks lovely. Oh, well, of course he does. Well, I was only kidding. You do look lovely, Arthur. <laughs> Ben was only teasing, weren't you, Ben? <laughs> now you have a wonderful time at the party. How am I going to have a wonderful time? Ben seems to have all the answers. You tell him. OK. Arthur, I can tell you how to have a great time at this party and make sure that you don't have to go to any more. You can? How, Ben? All you have to do is gross the party out. Yeah! What does that mean? Ah, uh, Ben, I should be telling you this. As soon as you get there, head straight for the food table. Yeah? Yep, and eat with both fists. Ben! Yeah, really get into it. Wade into the food. Get, get in elbow deep. Ben, that's enough. No, this is good. You heap up everything on one plate. Sausage rolls, ice cream, spaghetti, party pies. How about ham sandwiches? I like them. Yeah, them too. You heap them all up on one plate, then you pour on tomato sauce and green jelly. Oh, this is disgusting. This is great! Yep, and then you woof it all down as fast as you can. Really cram it in. Yeah, cram! Yeah. And then get two, uh, the three big glasses of coke and gulp them down as quick as you can. Then what? Then throw up on the cat. Ah! <laughs> uh, they haven't got a cat. They haven't got a cat. We'll improvise. How about a mother? Why not? <laughs> ben, Ben, you shouldn't be telling him this. Why not? I'm only joking. He's not taking me seriously. And how come he's taking notes? <laughs> Arthur, I'm only joking, right? I mean, I can't do those things. No, Arthur, you mustn't. What? Now, I want you to promise me, and Ben wants you to promise him too, don't you, Ben? Oh, uh, yes, I do. Well, all right, I promise. Now, off you go and have a lovely time. Do you know where I could borrow a cat? <laughs> oh, really? Something wrong, Benny? Oh, well, this is just a giddy limit. Oh, that's an appropriate choice of words for you. <sighs> Mr. Kelly, really, I must protest. <sighs> yes, of course you must, but must you do it in here? Beg yours? Well, can't you go out in the backyard and protest out there? There's no one to hear my protest in the backyard. Well, why don't you protest at the budgie? Budgies are good listeners. You haven't got a budgie. Well, if you promise to protest to it, I'll go and buy one. <laughs> no, Mr. Kelly, this is work-related. Are you sure? Yeah, because it's about my work and one of your relations. <laughs> Who? Sam. Sam? Sam. Oh, all right. What's she done now? Well, she's been using my computer willy-nilly, hasn't she? Well, what's wrong with that? I, I said she could, and anyway, she only uses it when you're not using it. But she's been teaching it mistakes. What? <laughs> she's been teaching it mistakes. She practices her typing on it, and, and, and she gets it all wrong, because, unlike myself, she's an amateur. Betty, you cannot teach a computer mistakes. Oh, is that right? They have a memory, don't <laughs> well, yes. Well, but... yes. So she's been practicing on it and getting it all wrong, and the computer remembers it. And next time I go to type it, it does it makes the same mistake again. That's idiotic. It is not. My computer's confused. <laughs> It's all Sam's fault. Betty, please try and understand. Mr Kelly, you... if you choose to do nothing about this, I will have no option but to withdraw my labour. You mean strike? If that's how you prefer it, yes. Betty, the last time you went on strike, you charged me 17.5% loading for the overtime you missed out on while you were striking. I know, and I'll do it again. I won't have anyone messing with my rams and my roms. You what? R-A-M, random access memory, and R-O-M, random operation. All right, all right, I'll talk to Sam. In the meantime, see what you can do about your RBI. My what? Your random Betty intelligence. <laughs> Hi, Sam, put them things. 
<laughs> hey, it's the party animal himself. Hey, Arthur, how'd the party go? Great, Cindy's not talking to me anymore. And it turned out they did have a cat after all. <laughs> well, Arthur, you didn't do all those dreadful things Ben told you, did you? No, I just my normal, irresistible self. Well, how come Cynthia's not talking to you? Jealousy, Ben. The green-eyed monster itself. You mean you played up to all the other girls at the party? Not girls, Sam. Women. I've always said it. All the women are putty in my hands. <laughs> not all the women. Cynthia's mum and all her friends. They all want me for a toy boy. They do? <laughs> Believe it. Cynthia got so angry, she threw up on the cat for me. <laughs> well, guys, it's gonna go. The girls and I are having afternoon tea at the Hilton. <laughs> in front of a studio audience. This has been a Gary Riley production for the Seven Network.